Morning, fam. I live in a neighborhood now, and I got people that are walking around. And uh, well, I got some sun today. I was out and got some sun. It's sunny here. I'm almost like this close to being sympathetic for all you people that are in Minnesota, Missouri, Kentucky. This close to being sympathetic. And I think, well, hmm, it sucks, sucks to be you. I'm chewing on some really sour gummy bears, which are my favorite candy. Well, I just, my earliest childhood memory is eating lemon flavored gummy bears. My mom always made sure I had them. It's funny, I keep seeing things about Lily that she's completely un not conscious of at all, that she does exactly like my mother, just like, that I thought was unique. But, um, it's those little things that, you know, make me feel like I'm, I'm with the right one. I have no doubt of that, that I am. Because uh, I'm just, God got in love with her. She's super sweet. You should see her. In my entire life, kitty cats have always come to me and want to lay on me and be around me. And um, for the first time, they want to be around her more than me. I, I, this is like the first time in my life. <clears throat> so, there's two things I think you'll y'all ought to be paying attention to. First of all, well, I guess three. First, 15% um, of the voting electorate showed up for the Iowa caucuses. 15%. And Trump got half. He got half. That's a... Uh, I guess they weren't real enthusiastic about coming out in minus 28 degree weather. And I sincerely hope that as many people that were going to caucus for him died on the way there or on the way home. Because you're just shit human beings. I've been talking to this guy. I'm going to bring this up as an example for, for another thing. And it's hard to talk about a new, have a nuanced conversation with anybody anymore because we've uh, gotten so basic as fuck. Um, but I, I'm going to tell you about this guy. This guy's been arguing with me, telling me, "Well, you voted for Joe Biden. You're you're an idiot and that kind of shit." I said, "Oh, mm, well, that's interesting. I'm an idiot." according to you. Well, I was a chess master when I was 12 years old, and I was doing multivariable calculus when I was 17. And most graduate students can't do multivariable calculus. And you think I'm an idiot because you went to high school only. And um, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, he's, I said, you are the Dunning-Kruger effect. You're the uh, in, uh, incarnate. And um, when anybody smarts off like that to me, I mean, I can be an arrogant shit right back to them. The difference is, is that, you know, he thinks I'm an idiot for voting for Joe Biden. And I think he's an idiot because he is an idiot. You know, there's a big difference. He doesn't have any appreciable knowledge of anything. So, before I talk about the main thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about Ukraine. There is a metric fuck ton of uh, war footage. You can watch on YouTube. 
and most of y'all don't know that I was very interested in making weapons because I solved a, a problem called super cavitation and it has to do with making uh, torpedoes go faster very faster because the first war uh, the first uh, rule in undersea warfare is whoever shoots first wins so if two submarines are fighting usually the one that shoots first is going to win and that's why Admiral Rickover was very interested in developing faster faster uh, projectiles this is a dog neighborhood as you can see okay so anyway and the reason why I bring this up is is that uh, I the, the purpose for solving the super cavitation problem was to uh, create a faster weapon, create, create a faster torpedo, preferably one that could use a rocket. And I did that. Not that I'm particularly proud of it. I, I have a feeling that somebody else probably figured it out also. But uh, I know how to make all kinds of weapons, and one of the things that interests me is the weaponry. I don't know why. Let me look at that. One of a pair of gliding places over. So anyway, uh, the thing about the Ukraine is, is that we've been supplying them with all kinds of weapons. And the interesting thing with me, for me, is, is that one thing that the uh, Ukrainians are really good at is making drones. Not Global Hawk drones. I'm talking about ones you can buy at a store, strap a bomb to it, and go drive it into a $28 million, $20 million tank and blow it to smithereens. Because I've never had a quiet mind, and I think up shit like that, you know, like an M1 tank, for instance. I used to think about how to do that. Well, a lot of other people thought about how to do that. And and I'll tell you, I don't think it's particularly classified. It used to be classified. I don't think it matters anymore because I don't think we'll ever field tanks on battlefield ever again. But the uh, M1 tank has honeycomb armor on it. It's got titanium, different grades of it, and it's it looks like a big web. And the purpose for it was is because Russian RPGs Russian-made RPGs are extremely cheap, and what they do is when they hit the hit the uh, side of a tank, they shoot a projectile in there, and in that microsecond, what they do is they shoot liquid copper you know, that's boiling hot, and it penetrates the cell. Well, it won't do that on an M1 Abrams tank, but it will do. I mean, it does it on every Russian tank they are. And Russia is funny as it's funny as it, it's. It's sending every single tank possible to uh, to the front. Why? Because the the uh, Ukrainians can spend a thousand dollars to blow up a, a million dollar tank, a multi million dollar tank, a thousand bucks. That's how much a drone costs to shoot them. That's how vulnerable they are. They're absolute garbage, and. Uh, Watching that footage is just endlessly uh, amusing to me, seeing Russians get it, because I still kind of get a kick out of that. Now, on the other hand, uh, we've also they've also gotten our howitzers, our 150 millimeter howitzers, with um, they have they have precision smart munitions on them, so you can paint a laser at it, shoot it. At, for some of these armament, for some of the projectiles, and it'll go right on target. So, uh, and the Russians are absolutely getting their ass kicked up and down and all around. And I love it. It's just something they can't field tanks, armored personnel carriers, nothing that, because they're going up in smoke. They get within range of a. Uh, 
and when they when these F-16s come online, uh, this is going to be over a whole lot quicker than any of us think. But we still need to be, you know, helping these guys out. But the thing that pisses me off about this is that uh, they call them uh, kamikaze drones. And these kamikaze gro drones cost less than $1,000 to make. And all you do is you spot a tank and you fly the drone at it and you drop uh, uh, a munition at it. One of these tips of an RPG or just some, some of them are just grenades. And it'll penetrate the armor because Russian armor is absolute garbage. So uh, it also has... It also shows them using our uh, guided howitzers, and it also shows us using tow missiles. Well, tow missiles are something that piss me off. And the reason why they piss me off is because tow missiles are dinosaur old. They were, I mean, back in the 70s. They're still very effective, but the cost of a tow missile is like $100,000 now, okay? And these Ukrainian guys are can get a hundred can make a hundred drones for one tow missile. They can get, destroy a hundred tanks for the cost of one of these things. And Joe Biden just asked uh, the Pentagon asked for I think seven hundred ninety billion dollars for the defense budget, and Congress instead gave them nine hundred billion, 110 billion more than they were asking. I cannot begin to tell you how much money we squander on the military industrial complex. It really makes, it's, it would make everybody physically ill. The discretionary spending also that isn't part of the defense budget has gone up to $700 billion. So what's that 700 billion going to do in discretionary spending? Well, this is where I get a case of the ass, okay? This is the, the topic number three that really pisses me off. Now, I don't know how many of you all watch TikTok or gotten it. I have been, I have wanted to stay away from TikTok because I, I, you know, have a face that belongs on radio. And, uh, anyway, there's a lot of really good TikTokers there. But part of TikTok uh, is showing the difference between Palestinians and Israelis. And um, this is what I have to say about how the Israelis are behaving right now. They are behaving exactly like uh, spoiled children who are comically and sadly unaware of the cost of killing other people. And there was this one, she was actually a very beautiful young lady, and she talked about killing two Palestinians herself because she's in the Israeli army. And she thought, it, she was, she's ta telling the story about it and laughing about it, killing two people. And uh, that's not okay. That's not okay in any language or any way of being. But when you raise your kids like, you know, you, you were about to get wiped out or wiped off the planet by the Nazis, you know, you're going to tend to want to spoil your children, I guess. And that's what's happened. But this is the more important thing. Uh, this is the more important thing. This is something that's personal, personal to me, is the ease with which the Israelis lie. And they're teaching their kids to lie. Uh, you know, lie to anybody that's not inside the group. Lie lie to everybody. Say it's Hamas. Bring up Hamas. Do you support Hamas? Could you condemn Hamas? They all play, say the same things. And they all speak the same lies. And the reason why that's germane is, is because when you raise a bunch of kids to be spoiled little kids. And you teach them that it's okay to lie. That's really that's a really dangerous society you're re uh, rearing there, very dangerous. And uh, Bibi Netanyahu, more than any other person that I can think of alive right now, except maybe Putin, uh, is enacting what 
Voltaire said, uh, those who can make you com commit, uh, uh, believe, those who can make you can believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. And that's what's going on right now in Gaza. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this shit for anybody. I haven't seen one, one, not one person on Israeli television tell the truth. Not one. I've seen several on other channels. Norman Finkelstein is one of these guys. And uh, the guys whose parents were survived the Holocaust, and I think his name is Mate. He's really... Um, Abraham Mate, he's he's super uh, intelligent. But you, when you sit back and you look at the lowest common denominator of the Israeli citizens there, uh, they're spoiled little children. They're ignorant as fuck, and they think that they should just uh, kill all the Gazans, all the Palestinians. And I saw this jackass. I can't watch this show. Uh, it's called PBD. I don't. PBD. It's a podcast. It's apparently very, but it's got two fucking morons. One guy is a former multi-level marketing expert from Iran. His parents are from Iran. He grew up in the United States, but he's a fucking idiot. And he's, his co-host is a bigger idiot. And you think that none of this shit uh, affects us. Well, it does. It does. when Because Israel, for all intents and purposes, is a our 51st state. And when Netanyahu is acting like a petulant little child and mass murderer, uh, committing war crimes every single day and lying about it, that's a problem for us. Because it harms democracy when Israel claims that it is a democracy. And it's not a democracy. Uh, it's a theocratic state. Fa theocratic, apartheid, fascist state, if you want to get technical on it. And uh, I know that's pissed off some of my friends who are Jewish. And I'm just not at that point where I'm willing to bite my lip and see this when I see Israeli soldiers laughing about uh, killing other people, killing other human beings, and laughing about it like it's something to laugh about. They don't take that shit seriously. Now, I can't say, like, my Uncle Chuck, for instance, he was a completely different generation, and he was you know, poor white trash grew up in the depression and stuff. And he did say that, you know, the only thing he wished he'd done is he'd killed more Nazis. That's a little different. That's a little different than, he didn't say that laughing at me. It's because, uh, well, he had a purple heart and he had, uh, he lost several of his friends. Now, these little uh, princesses in Israel they don't have any self-awareness. They're not conscious of it because they lie to themselves. The media lies to them. And when they leave that carefully honed environment that has cre created that sphere, it's like Barbie land. I, I really think that uh, Barbie movie kind of uh, put a fine point on that. Um, because everything is upside down and you don't know it because you never leave that world. You never endeavor to think, to listen to somebody like Norman Finkelstein. And something happened on the 7th besides the terrorist attack. Because it really wasn't, uh, it was the most Jews that have been lost since the Holocaust. Okay. Uh, they claim 1,400 dead. We don't know how many of them were killed by the Apache helicopters that Israel sent in. And we know that they're uh, happy to pull the trigger. They're kind of indiscriminate about that. But the thing that's more concerning to me is if you get on TikTok and start uh, read, there's a app that you can buy where uh, you in, you pop up in somebody's feed. And this is uh, like the number one app in Israel. So all these kids in Israel pop up and they say, oh, do you support Israel? And then somebody will have like an Israel flag or whatever. And they're talking about it. And lots of people are recording the reactions to see just how oblivious and immune to horror that the Israeli people are. And that includes the soldiers too. I mean, there's, there was a, there's a video of IDF soldiers in a mosque 
uh, dancing a cedar and uh, chanting in there because they wanted to rub it in the faces like uh, all of their ancestors that were defeated by Salah Hadin. And they're, they're now in the mosque that Salah Hadin raised there. And so they think this is some kind of historic thing. No, it's just you all being scum, human scum. And if you're thinking about uh, that it's okay to somehow uh, kill your fellow man, that's a problem. And the problem that I see with this is, is that it's going to have problems in the United States. It's especially, especially with 24, 25 million Muslims in the United States. You think that doesn't matter? Okay, well, Trump got 15% of the people to show up in Iowa, and half of them voted for him. Joe Biden won, uh, what was it, 83 million, th or 82 million in, uh, votes. You know how many of those he won? Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Arizona by, uh, and Georgia. It's like 50,000. Same, the same that Hillary lost by. And uh, that was because Muslims voted for Joe because they knew what a disaster Trump would be. And Joe has made the political calculation that, well, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and do this uh, genocide with the Palestinians because uh, I'm more servile to the Jews. All you have to do is look in my own administration and because there's no... Uh, Muslims or Palestinians in the Biden administration telling him to, hey, you might want to start with the ceasefire. No, he bypassed Congress and sent Israel, which is against federal law, and we're sitting here touting, and bitching, and pissing and moaning about Trump flouting the law when Biden's doing the same goddamn thing. Either the law applies or we ignore it, why does Joe Biden get to, get to flout the law? It is against United States law. We have passed legislation that forbids any American president to give military aid to any country that has nuclear weapons. It's against the law. And he did it. And um, that's kind of a problem that I don't see how that's gonna work out in the end because we're in an upside down world right now. And it bothers me a lot. It really bothers me that there's so many um, grandchildren or, or great grandchildren of the Holocaust talking shit about how they kill Palestinians. And um, I, that's not gonna turn out well for them. It's not gonna turn out well for any of us. And uh, Israel needs to stop acting like petulant uh, war criminals uh, with children who are aloof, stupid, and um, ignorant of world events because that's what they want to keep them from the harm uh, or keep them from knowing that their government is a piece of shit, that Bibi Netanyahu is a piece of shit. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that on the record. I mean, so nobody, know, so nobody says, "Oh, well, Thomas is kind of, you know, he's on one side or the other." But uh, he, on this tale, he was. I wonder what side he was on. No, nope, I'm not ambiguous about shit like that. Um, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned that uh, Jack Smith is not going to get a conviction in time to keep Trump off the ballot. And I wouldn't give a shit. I personally wouldn't give a shit as long as I knew that that orange motherfucker wasn't going to be in my life anymore. I don't want him in my life. I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to hear anything he says. The only thing I want to hear is that he's dead. His kids are dead. Uh, that's the thing. That's all I want to hear. They're, that Ivanka had a terrible, tragic accident and, jun and Junior you know, fell off a ski lift and broke his neck. That's the kind of only shit I want to hear from them. And to all you dumb fuck Christians out there, I mean, I don't know what, how much more evidence you need you need to convince yourself that, you know, there is no God. But just the fact that Trump has lived to be 80 years old uh, is proof enough that God doesn't exist. Because in every single way, Trump is the Antichrist. 
Antichrist. He, everything that he does is the exact opposite of what Jesus would do. And uh, Jesus, just so you know, is a figment of your imagination. And I wish y'all would grow the fuck up. Because all this religious shit is causing a whole lot of problems that are going to end up triggering some kind of nuclear event. And uh, none of us want to see that. It, it's too awful to, to happen, but we're kind of making it inevitable because, well, you want to believe in Jesus. And you want, you know, if it's okay if they want to outlaw abortion and, uh, you know, impose their... Uh, religious beliefs into, you know, they codify their religious beliefs in law, okay? It's not okay. It's not okay. It'll get, make things a whole lot worse. And it'll make you wish that you were living in another country. I'm glad I'm to be living in another country. I'm happy as a lark, frankly. And, uh... Yeah... But uh, I, I still appreciate this platform some, even though I detest Zuckerberg, and it, but it's made me some really close for, close friends. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to you know, pussyfoot around and tell uh, my American Jewish friends, well, you know, those Israelis got their heads screwed on straight. No, they don't. They're fucking, they're batshit crazy. And I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know how to get their attention to do that because I'm not in a club. I'm not in, I'm not in any religious club uh, because religion's stupid, all of it. It isn't, I'm not particular to anyone. I'm more, more angry with Christians, frankly, but uh, I sure wish this genocide would, shit would stop immediately and somebody would drop BB Netanyahu like a three foot fucking putt because he's human garbage of the lowest order. And, uh, they killed their own brother. Yep. So anyway, well, I just want to come out and say, hey, um, I've got some, I've got a project underway, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to fix it, if I need supplies for it, is it? But anyway, I mentioned it before, but I'll put a, I'll put some uh, e uh, Easter eggs for anybody to find. And, um, uh, You'll see what I'm fixing to start, hopefully. Anyway, but uh, y'all have a good evening. Uh, hope you have a good day. Talk to y'all later.